Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A few years ago, I took the confirmation class to our seminary chapel in Mankato. And in the front of the chapel, there's this great big stained glass window of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. You see Jesus leading some sheep and and one lamb he's carrying in his arms. And so the, the seminary president asked our teens, he asked them, well, which lamb in that stained glass window do you want to be? And of course, all the kids said, we want to be the one in Jesus' arms. We want to be the lamb that's being carried by our Savior, Jesus. But my question today is, is how do we go from that nice picture of being carried in Jesus' arms to actuality? How do I know I'm being carried in Jesus' arms? And this comes down to what we call self-care. Most people have what we call a self-care routine. Self-care is is taking time and energy into taking care of yourself. We understand that our body has certain needs. Sleep, diet, exercise, hygiene, all these things that go into self-care to ensure a healthy lifestyle. But what about spiritual self-care? What does spiritual self-care look like? Well, today we'll see that spiritual self-care is very much putting ourselves in the arms of our Good Shepherd. And the verses that we have for our attention today teach us how to be a sheep of that Good Shepherd. The verses for our meditation today are recorded in Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 34. I invite you to stand as we read these verses in Jesus' name. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going, that they did not even have a chance to eat, He said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? These are your words. Heavenly Father, make us holy by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Please be seated. When it comes to our spiritual self-care, oftentimes the most important step in that that we encourage as pastors and that pastors ourselves need to use in order to continue feeding God's flock is personal time in God's word. We call this devotion time. And because so often I find like From the pulpit as a pastor, I'm encouraging people to be in the Bible and read God's word. I realize that oftentimes we don't really teach or instruct people what that looks like. How do I frame a devotion for myself when I'm reading God's word, whether it's a little Bible verse of the day or a large section of God's word? And so today there, I want to focus on 
Three simple questions you might ask yourself as you study God's word. The first question we ask ourselves when we approach a Bible verse is, how do these verses show me my sins? How do these verses show me my sins? We call this the law. The law emphasizes and and teaches us how we all, like sheep, have gone astray and not followed Jesus, our good shepherd, as we ought to have. And so even as we look at these few verses in front of us today, what is the law in these verses? Well, these verses are all about rest and finding our rest in Jesus. And that makes me ask myself, what is robbing me of my rest today? What is robbing me of my peace? So often, there are burdens and challenges, difficult situations that we wrestle through that might keep us awake at night even. And what I find is so often I am hesitant, even maybe resistant, to go to God in prayer and put those things in his hands. And I like to ask myself, well, why is that? Oftentimes it just boils down to my human pride. You know, I like to think to myself that I'm strong enough. I can carry this on my own. I can figure this out on my own. And so I rob myself of the peace that Jesus wants me to have. At the same time, when we find ourselves overly stressed and anxious in life, we also have to ask How often is this stress and anxiety self-inflicted? You see, I have to accept my own limitations as a human being. You know, I only have so much time. I only have so much energy. I only have so much love that I can give. And so it is ordinary and, in fact, healthy for me to put parameters on what I can expect of myself to do. In a life that's constantly demanding more and more from us, whether it's from work or our family or kids, then it is healthy for me to learn my limits and learn how to say no. And think about how important that message is to teach our kids. To teach our kids that we can't do everything. There are limits to how much we can do and how many different things we can be involved in. That's a good lesson to teach our children. Because really what you're teaching them and focusing on for yourself is a truth that I am not God. I do not have infinite time. I do not have infinite energy. I cannot be in many places at once. That's God's parameters, not mine. Finally, when it comes to rest, we need our time for self-care. We need our vacation time. We need our time to get away. But so often, how does our time away involve Jesus? Are we intentional about taking time to spend with Jesus in his word? Because that's where we find real rest. And you'll notice what Jesus says to his disciples that day. He says, come away with me and find a quiet place for rest. Our rest is always with Jesus. The second question I want to ask myself as I meditate on God's word is how do these verses lead me to Jesus? We call this 
the gospel. The gospel doesn't focus on what I have to do for God, but the gospel is all focusing on what God has done for you, what Jesus does for you. And as one of the Good Shepherd's lambs, it's the gospel that truly brings us closest to Jesus. When we look at these verses, we see Jesus' compassion, how much he cares. You see that compassion for his disciples. They are working hard. The, the 72 were sent out and they come back to Jesus. They're, they're excited about all the good things God has done through them and their ministry, but they are overwhelmed. The people keep coming and they keep coming and they keep coming. And sometimes we can, we can feel guilty saying, all right, I need some time for myself. And so it's beautiful how Jesus is the one who pulls his disciples away. He notices they're so overworked, they don't even have time to feed themselves. So he says, come away with me and find some quiet rest. He's caring for his disciples. And what's interesting is is when the crowd meets them there, and you can almost imagine the disciples are so excited to have some rest, and then they find out that, oh, there's people here too. And it's almost like this beautiful moment where Jesus, I just imagine Jesus turning to his disciples saying, you stay here and rest. I'll take care of this. I'll take care of this. That's Jesus' compassion again. He sees these people as sheep without a shepherd, and he's going to give and give and give of himself in order to feed them and satisfy their souls. And you see, in a world where people often wrestle with burnout, because, again, our world is always demanding of us, taking from us, taking our time, our love, our energy, We need to be filled. We need, you need to be filled up. And the thing about self-care is it it can be a little deceptive. Self-care says, I'm going to focus on myself, which is true. But when it comes to spiritual self-care, you truly have your soul satisfied, filled, fed, nourished, not by focusing on yourself. By focusing on Jesus. By focusing on Jesus' limitless capacity to give. This self-sacrificial giving where he never tires to pour out his love. And there's no greater place where you see Jesus' self-sacrificial giving than on the cross where he gave himself up for you, gave himself over for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let his side be opened where blood and water flowed out. He is the fountain of endless love and grace. And in a world where we're fed by people giving themselves for us, Where else in the world can you find someone that gives himself to you so truly, so completely, as when Jesus says, take and eat, this is my body. In such a personal, beautiful, intimate way, Jesus feeds you, strengthens you, fills you up with himself. For all the times we feel overtaxed by life, I want you to just imagine Jesus coming to you saying, you rest, be at peace, let me serve you, and I'll take care of the rest of this. Think of your loved ones that you're worried about or nervous about. Jesus says, I'll take care of them. You Rest. The third question we ask ourselves as we meditate on God's word is that I want to ask, how do these verses change me? 
Because you see, the gospel always has that effect on God's people. The gospel makes us want to be more and more like our Savior. As sheep of the good shepherd, it means the gospel and listening to Jesus' voice makes me want to follow after Jesus even closer. As we look at these verses today, the thing that strikes me is how as soon as the crowd finds out where Jesus is going to be, they're so excited. They run on foot to be where Jesus will be. And I find this is the attitude of God's people, God's flock, throughout all of time, is that they, or you, cannot wait to be where Jesus will be. You cannot wait to gather with God's people and be served by Jesus himself. That's so important today because I find in American Christianity that attitude is shifting. That attitude is changing. More and more often I hear Christians say, well, Jesus is everywhere, so I don't need to gather at God's house for worship. I can worship wherever I want by myself. And it is true that in Ephesians 4, the Apostle Paul teaches us that that Jesus has ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. As, As true God, there is nowhere that Jesus is not. He is truly everywhere. But the other thing that the Bible teaches us is that there are different ways that Jesus is present and among his people. And depending on the way he's present with you, it impacts the blessing that he gives you. So for instance, in Matthew 18, Jesus says, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. And what is Jesus talking about? He's talking about worship. When God's people, whether it's just two people meeting privately to do the Lord's Supper or prayer, devotion, and meditation on God's word, or or a whole gathering of Christians, that, that Christians gather together in the name of Jesus. As our worship began, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that God, in a special and blessed way, is present among his people when you gather together. And there's something about that that excites you and energizes you and and draws you back to God's house. Because there's a way Jesus is here that's different than where he is everywhere else in creation. Or if you think of Jesus' promise to you when he says, this is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus is present in a special way to feed and strengthen his people, to fill you up with the gospel and to cleanse you with the forgiveness of sins. And that is a blessing you find nowhere else in all of creation. It's because of how Jesus is present among his people that God's people throughout all of time have said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Or they have said in the Psalms, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So as a Christian meditates on God's word, we we reflect on how the word shows us our sins, how it leads us to our Savior Jesus, and how it teaches us how Jesus would have us live and do, what Jesus would have us do and how he'd have us live. 
And so having done those things, the last thing we do is we want to bow our heads and pray about those things and give those things to God in prayer. So I'll invite you to bow your heads and pray with me today as we close our meditation. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that too often as sheep we have wandered away from you and have failed to rest ourselves in your everlasting arms. Help us, Lord Jesus, to find our true rest in you. Help us place our cares, our worries, our burdens, our sins, our loved ones, even ourselves in your everlasting arms. Fill our hearts with the eager desire to always follow you, to come to you and find our rest, to eagerly seek that place where you are found in word and sacrament. Be our provision, our strength, our comfort and joy until at last you lead us to the green pastures of the blessed in heaven where we find eternal rest in you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.